In this video, we're going to take a look at a toolpath called inlays. Now, inlays are basically something that fits into another piece. So you create, let's say, a pocket or a recess, and then you create the corresponding part that fits into it. Now, the problem with doing this is normally, if you were to do it manually, and not use the inlay toolpath is that when you do the pockets or the recess, the tool, let's say, for instance, this star that I have here. Now, this is just a, a basic example, but it has sharp corners, which is important. Now, if I zoom in, the tool wouldn't be able to get right into this corner. So it would leave you with a radius on the pocket or the recess of whatever the radius of the tool is. So when you come to cut out the part that fits into it, that wouldn't have that problem. It would be able to create a sharp edge. Okay. And when you came to fit them together, they wouldn't fit. So what you would use to do would be to create fillets on every sharp corner. So you've got the radius of the tool on every sharp corner, so it would fit. And you'd also have to offset slightly in order for it to fit, because obviously if it was size on size, it just wouldn't fit into the pocket. Okay, now the inlay toolpath does all of this automatically for you. Okay, and it saves you a lot of hassle having to put all of the fillets on sharp corners. And I've done this myself in the past where I've had maybe a, a long sentence of letters or a, a long word. And there are so many sharp corners on there that when you do it manually, you're more than likely to miss one of them. And then at the end, you try to fit it in there and it doesn't fit because of a sharp corner, okay? So I'll show you how to use the inlay toolpath in order to get around this. So if you go to toolpaths, and then the last toolpath under 2D toolpath is create inlay toolpath. Now, when you select this, it will open up another dialog box. So it asks you whether you would like to do the female or the pocket or the hole, so if you're doing push through letters, or if you want to do the mail, so the part that fits into it. And you can also do step pockets and stepped holes, for instance, if you want it to butt up against the back edge. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just do a basic one with this. So I'm just going to do a pocket for the female and then a straight for the male. OK, so at the moment, we're just concentrating on the pocket. OK, so the female. So if I select pocket, what this will do, it will open up a female pocket. Now, it's pretty much exactly the same as doing an area clearance. There isn't many differences within the actual toolpath. So if I select the vector and let's enter a finished depth, Let's say I want this to be a quarter of an inch deep. Okay. Now I'm just going to set up my material down the bottom. Click set up. And let's do this half an inch thick. Okay. Again, as I've said previously, material Z0. I'm setting this up to be top of material. If you set up on your CNC to be at the wise board, then select the bottom one there. Don't worry about model position in material. That's just for 3D work and select OK. Right, so if I come back up, let's select a finishing tool. Now, what I'm going to use is, let's say a quarter of an inch, OK, to do this. So click Select, and it will use the quarter of an inch to finish this. I can choose the strategy to be either an offset or raster. And I can also use a roughing tool if I want to. So if this is quite a large area, I can use a roughing tool to get rid of most of the material and then use a smaller tool just to get into those corners. Okay, I'm not going to bother doing that. And then just select Calculate now. So that creates this toolpath. Okay, 
Now, it doesn't look much different to a area clearance, but it is. So if I zoom in, let's say, to this top part here, and you can see the toolpath here, it's coming right up to this edge. Now, if I were to simulate that, you can see that it's leaving this radius on there. And that's because of the tool, okay? You can't physically get in there. So this is what I was saying about when you create the part that fits in there. It won't fit in there because of that radius that's on there, okay? Now, if I delete the simulation and we take another look at this toolpath, if you take a look at one of these corners, now you can see that this isn't following the shape of the outside here. Now the reason being is that the program knows that it needs to round this edge. Okay, so this is where it's really useful because what it's doing, it's rounding this edge because when I go to do the mail part, it won't be able to get into this corner. Okay, so it's rounding the edge for me for when I do the mail part. So if I simulate that, you can see that I've got this rounded edge. Okay, so if I delete the simulation and then turn on my vectors again, so this is done for the pocket, okay? So what I can do now is save this, send it to my CNC machine, and not worry about it for a while until I do my mail, okay? So let's close that, and I'm going to delete the female pocket, okay? So what you would normally do, you'd save this, and maybe make a new model, or you would save it and then delete the toolpath, and then save it again as a, as a mail, okay? So let me just delete that. Now you'll notice that the inlay wizard stays open. So this is just telling you that you haven't really completed the inlay. You've only done the female. So if you have closed it, it's not a problem. Just go back to create inlay toolpath. And we're going to do a straight mail this time. So this is the part that fits in there. So I'm assuming that we've already machined the female or already saved it out, okay? So select a male and the finish depth. Now this is entirely up to you how you want this to look. Let's say that I wanted something to, to fit flush on the top of what I've just created. So the finish depth is a quarter of an inch, okay? So I actually want this material to be a quarter of an inch. So if I set that up again, change the material to be a quarter of an inch, select OK. The finish depth is a quarter of an inch, so it's going to cut the part out. And then this part will fit perfectly flush with the pocket that I've created. Okay. Now you can add bridges to this, for instance, and add ramping moves if you wish. I'm not going to bother doing that. There are separate videos for those. Select a tool. And this is quite important. You need to use the same tool that you finish the pocket with, okay? Otherwise, you'd have different radiuses on the corners, okay? So use the quarter of an inch, click Select, and then I'm going to calculate it. So on the corner here, you can see that it's going round. If I were to simulate that, you can see that it has left that radius on there because it just can't physically get in there. And if I delete that simulation, turn the vectors back on, take a look at the top. Now you can see what's happening here is it's coming round and it's knocking off this sharp edge. Okay, so we need it to do this in order for it to fit into that pocket that we created because it left that radius on. So if we simulate that, you can see that it's taking off that edge, okay? Now, there's still one final thing to do in order to make this work, and that is, let's just delete this, turn that back on, and that is to make it a little bit smaller. Now, we could have made the pocket a bit larger if we wanted to, but I'm going to make this a bit smaller. So the allowance, so I'm going to do this 
let's say five fair aside, smaller. Okay, and that brings that in by five fair. Okay, each side, and this should then fit within the actual pocket that we've created. If you want to bring it down even smaller, let's say I wanted to bring it down, let's say 40 fair or one mil, just so you can see it actually move. Click create and you can see it move inwards. Okay, so that's how you create an inlay toolpath within Carve Code Maker.